Hey, good to see you again. The factory sent over the parts that were looking good on the rig. They're being fitted as we speak. Have a look at the report. Hey, what's going on guys, Ira here, and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode, episode number 116 today for the Japanese Grand Prix in Season 6. We come to this episode with a brand new part fitted to the car, the final minor upgrade I believe we have on the R&D tree left, apart from if you disclude the reliability upgrades, that is the final performance enhancing minor upgrade. Now, they're all major ultimates from now on, so that will probably be one of the last upgrades we do this season. We've obviously got one pending for next episode, which is a tyre update for the USA Grand Prix, which we've been working on for three episodes now since we bought that, but that is the final one. And with that final minor engine upgrade there, you can see on the chart on the right-hand side, we're finally back to the top step of that chart for engine power. Mercedes used to be below Red Bull there. Uh, we used to be below Force India and Williams, and I think even at one point, Ferrari were actually above us as well. So at, at one point, we were slap bang average right in the middle of that chart. Uh, we start the season off with Force India, Red Bull, and Ferrari leading the way. As the season's progress now 16 rounds in Ferrari are back where basically we started this season Red Bull have dropped back down the order and Williams Force India and ourselves we've all improved so all the Mercedes teams have been the ones to really push forward with engine development this season which I thought was quite funny because I didn't think I would be doing that much engine development I ended up doing so but even the other Mercedes powered cars have decided that that's the way we're going to pull the lap time out of the bag rather than pure aerodynamics and the chassis where we're still lacking definitely compared to the the Ferrari and the Red Bull car you know, overall on the actual on paper uh, kind of chart itself. Obviously, it's a little bit different on track in terms of chassis wise. I think we're kind of near enough kind of getting there. Obviously, we've got the tire wear coming through. We've done enough, I think, uh, chassis weight reductions. It's just really the aero where maybe we lack a little bit, you know, some balance in the car that's still not quite, not quite there. But in terms of the lap time itself, I think we're kind of really damn good actually at this point in terms of we're going for the top positions. I'm a little bit disappointed when we go down the order, obviously, in, in qualifying. And all in all, I think the car works quite well. We definitely are gaining a lot of time every time we get the power down on the straight compared to in the corners. And you can see in some of the races gone by, we definitely are still lacking a bit in the corners. But, you know, you can only do so much in one season. And, you know, for where we started, where I thought this car was horrendous, I still think it's a little bit annoying to drive from time to time. But, you know, it's been working well for us so far in the last couple of episodes. But obviously, last time out was a difficult one for us. If you have missed that one, be sure to check that one out before you see this one, the Malaysian Grand Prix. Damage limitation race for that and then obviously my game broke which was a little bit annoying but we came away from that still ahead in the championship by 14 points to Daniel Ricciardo and now we go into qualifying here in overcast Q2 you can see making some mistakes into turn one and having to kind of chop away at the steering wheel to try and control the car in Q2 obviously the track conditions may be a little bit colder due to the overcast nature so we come across the line and by the end of the session in Q2 we only just about make it into Q3 in terms of lap time we're actually quite comfortable but you can see in P10 compared to P2 of our teammate there so a little bit off the pace so that was a little bit worrying but as we go into q3 the sun starts to come down but the clouds have parted and so the track's a little bit better and definitely navigated turns one and the first part of the s section a lot better in this first flying lap here in q3 and then through the second sector we go towards the hairpin very tricky brake zone obviously easy to lock up the front left tire we slide a bit in second gear almost but that gets the nose turned in quite nicely there and then we get a pretty good exit going up the gears a little bit faster just to make sure we don't get a, uh, too much wheel spin and then we come through the final chicane across the line at the moment it's provisional pole position which I was really really psyched about but by the end of the session Nika Hulkenberg is the one to pip us by just a couple of hundreds there so uber uber close between the top three uh Nika Hulkenberg myself and Lewis Hamilton so so close good to see Lewis there as well so definitely you can see that is where the pace of the car was we're on the first row of the grid in second place Hamilton on the second row in third both ahead of the uh, Red Bull car so that's really good for us and uh, positive starts then for the Japanese Grand Prix obviously We've gone always quite well in Japan, you know, I've said this since the game launched, it's such a nice track to drive now on this brand new game, uh, compared to last year's game, F1 2016, because they redid the circuit and it's just so much more flowing, and I think, uh, to use the words I used at the very launch of the game, Sector 1 is just orgasmic, it's just awesome every single time, no matter, you know, heavy fuel, low fuel, qualifying run, it's just great to drive, and you know, in terms of the record we've had in career mode around Japan, it's been pretty damn solid, we've done a, you know, very good job at us 
usually managing the tyres and usually trying a one-stop. Last season, I think we tried a two-stop and all of us got caught out by Julian Palmer and he was the one who won this Grand Prix in Season 5. I don't think that'll be the case this time round. Maybe his teammates got a good chance, but we're there in second place, so we equally got a really good chance to win this Grand Prix, which would pretty much maybe kill off Ricardo's season. And, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie. That might be a good prospect in terms of just us to nail down that, that position. Obviously, we're going flat out trying to do the best job we can every single time. So, let's go to the full grid, and then we'll see how this uh, race pans out. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Nico Hülkenberg lines up on pole position and a Mercedes alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo and Vettel, Perez, Ocon, Raikkonen and Roman Grosjean. Sainz, Massa, Fernando Alonso and Stroll, Kvyat, Magnussen, Jolien Palmer and Stoffel van Dorn, Ericsson and Pascal Wehrlein completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's race time here then in Japan. And last year's race winner, Julian Palmer, actually gets a grid penalty. So he's way down the order then. So I don't think he's going to be matching last season's uh, uh, record here around uh, Suzuka. But here we go to our race strategy. The default is a two-stop, it looks like. So the one-stop isn't even there as a factor. So yeah, alluding to why I want to have that tyre upgrade coming in for next race. Because the tyre wear still technically is quite poor on the Mercedes car. So we're going to go with a two-stop. We'll see if we can maybe try the one-stop because that probably will be the best their option for us in terms of track position. Obviously, that was the race winning strategy for the last couple of seasons really around here. But you can see I'm going to make some a few adjustments and kind of go a little bit longer on that first uh, first stint of super soft tyres. And that's going to open up the potential one stop onto medium tyres from those super softs that we have to start on, obviously, having qualified them are on Q2. So here we go then to five red lights to the Japanese Grand Prix. Round number 16 of season six. And we're underway. It is a good start for us. But a bit wheel spin in third gear sends us towards the we control it though, thankfully, and in fourth gear, we do get it back towards uh, Hulkenberg, but unfortunately to turn one, unable to make anything work. We did have uh, just a tad of a nose alongside Hulkenberg, but he's made a lightning star, as well as Sebastian Vettel there. He's up in the third place, ahead of my team at Hamilton, so he's jumped Hamilton. Hamilton started third, of course, so he's down to fourth now. You can see already in the S section how much uh, Hulkenberg is getting away, so a very light and nimble car that Renault car is, and in sector one, he's really waltzed away, and so he's already looking very commanding for a race lead at the moment. Now he's move on to the end of that lap one. Hulkenberg already extending that gap down the main straight as we go through 130R. Hamilton down the inside. Hamilton and Vettel go side by side. So the championship rivals from the real life 2017 season go side by side here in season six of this F1 2017 career. And, and Hamilton around the outside the final corner. Vettel going to squeeze him hard towards the left hand side. But ultimately my teammate will get that I think. And he's going to be up into third place. You can see lurking behind. I think that's Max Verstappen then as Vettel goes defensive now to the inside and Verstappen has a bit of a sniff. And so far. I haven't seen where Ricardo is. I think he's a bit down the order, maybe fighting the Force India car. So bad stuff there for our one and only championship rival. Though if Hulkenberg gets to win this race and he goes on to maybe take the momentum, you could say he could kind of lurk in as a late championship contender, but probably not. But uh, anyways, we move on later then as we've got onto lap four and Hamilton now is going to have a chance to maybe overtake us. We've uh, been quite slow in these opening few laps. I'm not going to lie. The tyres aren't feeling too great. The car isn't feeling too balanced. But we go defensive. We bang tyres with Hamilton going to try and send him wide. Uh, we're going to be as harsh as we can, but uh, still at the same time respectful to our teammate. But we go down the inside, keep it side by side through the S section. It's all about momentum here. You know, not a lot of braking uh, goes on, just about engine braking and kind of let the car roll through. We do that successfully. And as we climb the hill, we're going to remain in P2. Big old train though behind us, and we quite literally wrestle the car through up the hill. But uh, I'm fighting Hamilton quite hard here because although Hulkenberg's gap is even bigger now to P1, we know the Renault could usually make an extra pit stop. So if we can remain in P2, that'll become a net P1 if Hulkenberg's making an extra pit stop in this uh, in this race. So that's why I'm fighting so hard here. But Hamilton's got a good run, as well as Perez, I think. I think Perez is going to make it three wide here. We're on the outside, lift off to give him the space, but we make contact with Hamilton and Alto Perez. We're around, and we've had our front wing off there. It's a big shunt for myself, Hamilton, and Sergio Perez. Carbon fiber flying everywhere. We're trying to spin ourselves around. Have to be careful. A lot of cars still coming through there. On, uh, on the main racing line and they all go and avoid Hamilton who's still parked up there and it's a 
opportunity for the Mercedes team. A bit of a contact being made with Hamilton and Perez there. I'm not too sure if Perez got too much damage actually, but definitely myself and Hamilton have incurred some. I've got an entire front wing off. I don't know how much damage Hamilton's got, but that is not going to be great. And Toto Wolf is going to be literally punching his desk at this point. We're into the pits then, of course, to have that front wing change. And also, we're going to strap on a brand new set of medium tyres now. So we are going to be forced into the one stop that I might have done anyway. But now we really have to try it. And it's going to be a long, long way. This, this isn't going to be an easy one stop. We're on lap six only. So that's going to be 21 whole laps on medium tyres. Now, I was hoping to take these tyres, the super soft tyres, to about lap 10, then pit to go 17 laps on, on the mediums. We're going to have to add an extra five to that. So that is going to be a big, big struggle to end this race. But let's look at a replay now. It was indeed a three-wide moment. Perez on the inside, Hamilton in the middle. Now I go as wide as I can. And then Hamilton and Perez make some contact, it looks like. And then they make contact with me. And then you can see that's what we saw, obviously, live there. A whole heap of carbon fiber foam board flying off in there as well. Uh, the P0 Pirelli sponsored board uh, kind of having a confetti party there with Hamilton. But here we go now on board. Let's see, because it looked like from that third person perspective, Hamilton and Perez were the ones who made real big contact and then that kind of spewed into me. It looks like oh, Perez Perez gets uh, out unscathed, but Perez was the one just didn't go tight enough. Perez could have gone so much tighter on that inside curbing to give Hamilton the room. He didn't do that and that spewed Hamilton basically. You can see there, look, they join tyres. That makes Hamilton make contact with me. He spins me around in a bit of a T-bone crash and then Hamilton has a second T-bone crash with Max Verstappen, but Hamilton making contact with me was what, what, what sent my car round across the face of the circuit. Be right on board with Verstappen now. He actually went for a move down the inside of Sebastian Vettel. Really nice move, actually. They still go side by side, but then look at this. Hamilton comes across, and it's, oh, it's an unfortunate T-bone collision there with Verstappen. But look at that. Max got off uh, unscathed, really. Only a tiny bit of front wing off. And then Vettel counts himself very lucky. I mean, for all the bad luck Sebastian Vettel's got this season in career mode, he came out of that completely unscathed. He just had a bucket of popcorn just watching that all unfold in front of him. And so really, the only two losers were myself and Hamilton. Uh, somehow Perez came out completely unaffected. So... Yeah, and he was probably the man who caused that collision, to be honest. So that's what I, I think that's how I'm going to call it there. Because it looked to me like if he gave Hamilton more room on the inside then, that, would have been, that wouldn't have been an issue. Because I gave Hamilton all the room in the world, really. So, yeah, really unfortunate. But now, as things stand, it's uh, Hulkenberg that still leads the way. Then you've got, well, you saw their whole train of cars of the Haas, the McLaren, and Fernando Alonso. You've got the two Ferraris who are slowing down, Tad. Then you've got Sergio Perez who just made a move there. I think that was or Ocon, I should say, on Palmer. And then you've got the two Red Bull cars lagging behind here. Uh, Verstappen obviously lost some time with the front wing off, but Ricardo is way down the order outside of the points at the moment. And we're going to look at a replay now because this started early for Ricardo. Ricardo was not caught up in that incident with myself and Hamilton Perez. It actually started much earlier on Ricardo's issues. He was already down the order before I had the crash with Hamilton, and this is why. He got a pretty poor start off the five red lights, but then in the S section, you can see he makes a slight bit of contact with Verstappen, and he lost a tad of his uh, right-hand side cascade element on the front wing, and that little damage there uh, is what costs him all these positions, because on lap one here, you can see, as we saw just up, uh, up the road, uh, Verstappen's up the road, and Hamilton is fighting Vettel there. Of course, we saw that live whilst we were watching that action lap one. Uh, me Meanwhile, back behind, what we didn't see was Ricardo losing one position to the Force India car of Sergio Perez. And obviously, Perez then eventually is going to get uh, get towards the front end and have a collision with myself and Hamilton. You can see Ocon comes through on the left-hand side, used the slipstream of his teammate there. And so Ricardo has already lost three positions now off the start of this Grand Prix. Obviously, he already lost actually four, actually, if you include Vettel, because Vettel was, uh, I think, behind Ricardo on the grid and got a great getaway, obviously, to try and fight uh, Hamilton initially in the opening lap there. And then Ricardo goes on the next lap and loses a position to Raikkonen. Raikkonen around the outside there. He's off circuit, Kimmy is. But the Iceman keeps his cool on the inside there and into the S section. Ricardo, obviously, this is where he's going to lose time into the corner, into the corners with a lack of downforce. You know, that tiny bit of an end plate loss there on the front right of his front wing is going to be really costly. And Raikkonen still going neck and neck with him through that entire section. Really lovely battle, but Kimmy does get it and forces him off onto the grass and gravel somewhat. And so that's not going to do him much use on the tyres. And then Ricardo, again, this is onto the same lap. At the end of that lap, he's now being uh, chased down by the first of two Haskars, I think that is. And so that's, I think, Grosjean down the inside. And so Ricardo, lap after lap, is just losing positions here. And this is only about lap four, lap five. We're, we're watching replays at the moment. And all the while, obviously, I'm still there in P2 trying to fend off Hamilton and Perez. And then you can see on the very next lap, the Williams car gets him. you got Carlos Sainz not too far behind there 
there as well. And we move on to the next lap, and it's just more misery for Daniel Ricciardo. He's going to get overtaken by the junior team, the Toro Rosso man, uh, Carlos Sainz the Spaniard, on the left-hand side there. So the Red Bull of Ricciardo really struggling at this stage of the Grand Prix. And looks like uh, Fernando Alonso to write up his chuff fancies himself there. So that'll be quite something in the McLaren Honda to overtake the Red Bull car. Um, and it's just going from bad to worse. And then eventually, to save face, Ricciardo does come into the pit stop before Fernando overtook him there. And this was a pit stop made before the collision with myself and Hamilton and Perez was made. So even before any of that contact was made, and I'm down the order, Ricardo was already nearly out the points almost. So misery for both us championship rivals. And so now you've got to say with Hulkenberg leading the way, you know, I, I kind of te uh, teased it. You know, if Hulkenberg wins this race and then goes win some more, he could thrust himself into the championship, uh, into the hunt uh, late on. But now we move on to our POV, lap 15 now. And we're down the inside of Raikkonen, who's finally made his first pit stop of the afternoon onto medium tyres. We try our best to go around the outside there. It's going to be so, so tricky. We try our best. We, we, we did quite well to get around the outside of him there. But then in the second phase of the S section, Raikkonen just has the grip there. Obviously, I've been on these tyres now for uh, what is actually nearly 10 laps now, lap 15. You know, we came in on lap 5, and then we cut all the way to lap 15, lap 16 now, as we come down the pit lane uh, pits right now. And Hamilton's in the pit stops now, so Hamilton making a two-stop here. I'm making a one-stop, obviously, so Hamilton is going to find himself quite uh, down the order now. But we do get ahead of Vettel, so now you can see why I'm opting for this one-stop, because although the tyre wear is going to be really poor, you can see there we're already ahead of Verstappen now as well. So I've got track position against a lot of top people like Vettel, Verstappen, and so, really, the job we have to do today is just try and take these ties and try and save them as much as we can and then basically defend at the very end of the race when they start to go off. Unfortunately, we can't get Esteban Ocon. So Ocon is ahead of us on soft tyres here as we enter lap 18. So we've got nine laps to go in this Grand Prix, but uh, we've already been on these tyres now for 12 laps. So it's going to be quite an ask here, and we have to do a lot of uh, fuel uh, management here, trying to use rich mix on the straights, save the fuel later on in the lap, because I know I'm pretty piss poor through the final corner, so I need rich mix to kind of uh, push me off and get some speed there as we go down the main pit straight, and also down 130R is a, a place where we need some rich mix, although, speaking about that, and going towards 130R now, lap 20, Vettel's got a great run there with the traction that Ferrari, Verstappen on the outside, we're in the middle, and I need to back out of this, this is definitely going to be a collision if I don't back out of it, so I lift off a little bit intentionally there to let Verstappen and Vettel through to fight there, because if I kept my foot in, I can guarantee there would have been a second crash. I've already had one crash in 130R. I'm not making it a second. And so now on the exit, though, of the final corner of Verstappen, uh, brake checks us somewhat and blocks us on the apex, parks the bus, parks the stadium. And so now we have to try and slipstream uh, and re overtake it, basically, for P9 now. Unfortunately, I try my best to lunge into turn one to maybe scare Vettel, but it doesn't work out. And so Vettel is going to keep that. So uh, in the end, I'm going to lose one position. Uh, we haven't lost two, though. So thankfully, it did get back past Verstappen, but I I think Vettel's going to waltz away now. So, tricky situation. And yeah, I could have been maybe more aggressive, but in the moment, I was thinking just about, oh, this is going to be a collision, isn't it? Because I just know how uh, stupid the AI can sometimes be in 130R. Uh, so, if I hadn't let the lift off, I can guarantee there would have been some contact with either Verstappen or Vettel, and that wouldn't have been pretty. So, thinking a bit, you know, kind of, I, you know, I'm in the lead of the championship, so I've got to think like that. I've got to think about safety in terms of, I'd rather come 10th than instead of 12th at least get one point in this race. And so that's exactly what we're going to try and do this race because now we've got Perez down the inside of Verstappen there of 130R. So Perez coming back into this Grand Prix with uh, making a two-stop. So that's exactly why I've gone for this uh, audacious one-stop because I've got ahead of a lot of two-stop runners. You know, Perez was, you know, he, he didn't get any damage in that crash. So he was actually up in like third place at, at some point, but his two-stops meant he's behind us now. Although saying that, he's got some excellent speed. Now, obviously the second fastest car in a straight line uh, Force India is, and Perez down the inside. We tried to break as late as we can, but obviously the worn tyres versus his fresh soft, you can see the difference there, he's able to just pull his car through the entry and exit of turn one, and he's up the order, and so now onto lap 25, the end of it onto, onto lap 26, we're in P10 now, and having to defend that quite hard but as I said, I'd rather get one point than no points, so let's just try and get this one point we know Ricardo is outside the points, so, you know, this one point will extend the championship lead. You know, it's quite weird to say that. Although we had that huge crash, we'll still extend the championship lead if we can just stay in P10 here ahead of Ricardo's teammate, Max Verstappen, as we move on to the last half of the Grand Prix. We've got very worn tyres. We've just about got enough fuel. We defend quite hard to the inside there, and we just about stay ahead. And you can see with standard mix now, we do have some fuel to use at the end of the lap. It'll be Nico Hulkenberg, though, that already crosses the line for the end of his race, so he's already finished his, and he's won the Japanese Grand Prix then and uh, in quite dominant fashion I guess you could say that was probably obvious from 
lap one and how far he got away from us but now on the last lap for us on the last straight towards 130R in rich mix and you can see we are pulling away from Verstappen so you know clever management from the fuel there if I do say so myself to just keep enough rich mix to get the advantage obviously as I literally mentioned at the very start of the episode we're getting the advantage on lap time from pure power not, not really much else and so we do stay ahead of Verstappen and we will come through for P10 one measly point in the World Drivers Championship but that will extend the lead uh, to Ricardo by one point so I think we'll be 15 points now ahead of Ricardo in the championship but this German win the Grand Prix. It's Jolie and Palmer also join him on the podium in third place. So a 1 3 for Renault. And it's Roman flipping Grosjean in second place there for Haas. A lot of weird results in this Japanese Grand Prix, of course, due to that crash because both Ferraris were down the order and uh, scored low points, I think it was. And obviously, both Red Bull cars finished outside the points, as well as my team at Hamilton. And I just about scrape into the points. We can see the likes of Fernando Alonso in P5, Magnussen P, uh, P6. So great stuff for those two guys. And so in the championship, though, there you can see 15 points. So yeah, quite funny, actually, after that quite, uh, you know, big, big crash there. You know, I almost thought the Civil War uh, kind of cards would have to come out there because, you know, it was uh, really not looking good. Myself and Hamilton were pretty much nearly last. But with Ricardo having that contact with his own teammate as well, um, you know, he's down the order as well. So it's actually, you know, it's not a great day for teammate contact, is it? The Red Bulls make contact on lap one, and then me and Hamilton make some big contact uh, later on on lap five. So it's not an all-round great day for teammate contact, but nonetheless, we still extend the championship, so I can't complain too much. So all in all, guys, still a very entertaining, nonetheless, Japanese Grand Prix for us. So smash the like button if you did enjoy it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Next episode, we've got that tire upgrade coming in for the USA Grand Prix, so we'll have to see how we do then. But uh, till then, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I've been Avra, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.